Let me introduce the next paper. Um, the theoretical framework for the comparative analysis of preconditions of Olvio's bullying prevention program called OBPP in Lithuanian and Norwegian schools. Uh, let me introduce to you Jiginta Baralsnes. Thank you. Give a warm welcome. Thank you. Dear participants, my name is Jiginta Baralsnes and I'm PhD student at Western Norway University of Applied Sciences. And today I'm really honored to be here in this conference and I'm going to present the theoretical framework for the comparative analysis of the preconditions of Olvius Bullying Prevention Program in Lithuanian and Norwegian schools. School bullying is socially and culturally complex phenomenon uh, that until now has largely been understood in the context of individual. But today, school bullying is also acknowledged as a complex behavior with multiple causes and risk factors ranging from individual characteristics to school settings and to broader social contexts. The application of Brofenbrenner's ecological system, which was mentioned today in the opening session uh, uh, of human development to bullying has become common in recent years and is applied in the th uh, as a theoretical framework for the comparative analysis of the preconditions of Olveus bullying prevention program in Lithuanian and Norwegian schools. Um, as Robert Thornberg has mentioned today, uh, the social ecological framework provides the opportunity for various theoretical perspectives to come together in addressing uh, uh, the micro, meso, echo, and macro systems uh, of school bullying, and hence the complex interplay of individual and contextual factors. By the other words, schooling bullying, uh, uh, school bullying is a complex behavior with multiple causes and risk factors. Uh, before, in this presentation, uh, I would like to elaborate the preconditions of Olveus bullying prevention program in Lithuanian and Norwegian school from the ecological perspective. Uh, and this presentation is focused on a typical teacher in Norway and Lithuania, who is presented as an individual in Brofenbrenner's ecological system theory, and Lithuanian Nor and Norwegian schools, which have implemented all this bullying prevention program and are running with quality assurance system, and the teacher training to intervene in school bullying is a core element of this program implementation and has an international perspective. And of course, my presentation uh, has some limitations. Uh, for example, I will not take into account uh, views of uh, pupils and their parents uh, uh, today in this presentation. Many researchers, as for example, Olveus, Havle, and Willi Ford, have agreed upon that teachers may be one of the most valuable resources, uh, resources in school bullying prevention efforts. Teachers' awareness, intervention, and attitudes towards pupils involved in bullying are reckoned as an important factor in reducing uh, school bullying. Moreover, teachers may lack some knowledge about how effectively, uh, effectively respond when they observe bullying, and their presence alone does not guarantee uh, uh, pupils' safety in school. Uh, I would like also to mention the theory uh, of planned behavior, uh, which is helpful in understanding teachers' role in school bullying prevention. And this theory claims that successful intervention requires, requires changes in perception, not only for pupils, but for teachers as well. According to Havli and Willi Ford, leaving the teachers to their own devices and good in, in intentions will not be adequate. Teachers need to develop perceptions, attitudes, uh, subjective norms, self-efficiency, and behavior by clearly de delining what bullying is and how one knows when one sees it, raising awareness of uh, the role that bullying plays in maintaining bullying, uh, increasing empathy toward victims, highlighting standards of equality, 
and promoting children's strategies for supporting victim and those they self-efficiency to do so. All these would be necessary for changing actual behavior. And it, had it has been developed and implemented many uh, various evidence-based school-wide approach anti-bullying programs in the school, but the meta-analysis of 44 anti-bullying programs, which was done by Toffee and Farrington, revealed that overall school-based anti-bullying programs are effective in reducing bullying and on average reduce bullying by 20 or 23 percent. Moreover, all these bullying prevention program inspired the 17th of these 44 evaluated anti-bullying programs. So in addition, Toffee and Farrington stressed that future interventions should be grounded in the successful always bullying prevention program, but should be modified in the light of the key program components that we have found to be the most effective. So the main goal of the Always Bullying Prevention Program is to make school a safe and positive learning environment in which adults display warm, positive interest and engagement. There are clear boundaries concerning unacceptable behavior. There is consistent use of non-physical, non-hostile, but negative sanction when rules are broken. And adults at school and ideally at home uh, act with authority and as a positive role models. And these principles have been translated into a number of specific uh, interventions at four levels. Uh, so the school level, the classroom, the indivi individual, and in some context, uh, mostly in the USA, the community level. And this program has been implemented in uh, several hundreds of Norwegian and Lithuanian schools. But now I would like to move to the ecological system theory, and uh, I would like to have a brief overview over all existing systems. So I would like to begin from the individual, where teacher is the main uh, participant. As it is showed in the table one, teacher's job uh, average salary in Norway and Lithuania varies a lot. For instance, minimum basic statutory salary was uh, nearly 11 times uh, lower in Lithuania in comparison to uh, Norway. Um, another interesting question could be concern a possible interface between teachers' education and the activity to prevent school bullying. And for instance, there are much more teachers with high university education in Lithuania than in Norway. And of course, there are, uh, um, uh, there are more women than men who are dominating as uh, teachers, both in Lithuania and in Norway. But I would like to admit that there are much more male teachers in Norway than in Lithuania. So actually, Lithuania is really struggling to uh, recruit uh, male teachers uh, and to work in schools. And uh, uh, the age or of teachers are uh, uh, more than uh, 40 years and going up. So actually, this phenomenon that uh, at schools are working more uh, a little bit like older or more experienced teachers are uh, uh, recognized both in Norway and in Lithuania. And of course, uh, a weekly workload of full-time teachers uh, differs a little bit, but not uh, very much. So actually, uh, teachers in Lithuania, they have uh, overall working time 36 hours per week, but uh, teachers in Norway can have from uh, 30 till 33 uh, hours per week. Let's move to the microsystem and have a brief uh, look into common features in, uh, features in Lithuanian and uh, Norwegian schools. And although schools in Norway and Lithuania use similar tools and do similar activities in bullying prevention, and they are doing all these measures that I mentioned in this slide uh, on the school level, class classroom level, and individual level measures. Of course, there are some challenges regarding uh, Olveus bullying prevention program, both implementation and maintenance. And the often missing ingredients, which could ensure a greater percentage of school uh, implements evidence-based bullying prevention programs and practices are 
adequate knowledge about the phenomenon. So actually teachers, they have a lack of this adequate knowledge, sufficient motivation to implement comprehensive school-based efforts. So actually teachers, they, they need to, will, to have a will to do it, and of course resources, uh, resources uh, to do it. And if we will have a look uh, into some differences between Norwegian and Lithuanian schools regarding school bullying, of course, first of all, I would like to mention that there is a huge difference in the rate of bullying in Lithuanian and Norwegian schools. And according to the results of the international report, which uh, was held by the Health Behavior in School Age Children Organization in 2013 and 2014, Lithuania, in comparison to other 40 countries, including Norway, has remained a country with the highest percentage of bullied pupils uh, in the age group of 11, 13 and 15 years old. And as it is shown in the table too, there are some approximately, uh, there are approximately four times more pupils in Lithuania at the age of 11 who have been exposed to bullying than in Norway. And moreover, Lithuania has 2.5 times more pupils at the age of 11 who have been exposed to bullying in comparison to HBAC average. The rate of pupils who have been bullied declines with uh, age, both in Lithuania and in Norway, but still there are, uh, there are 4.5 times more pupils at the age of 13 and 4.25 times more pupils at the age of 15 in Lithuania than in Norway who have been bullied. Now I would like to move to the next uh, system lever. Uh, me meso system is a system of micro systems. From the meso system level, interaction with family, school, and peer group have the potential to increase the risk of victimization and perpetration of violence in terms of shaping an individual's behavior. Before it is essential to analyze an interaction between school climate uh, components and teachers' activities within Olveo's bullying prevention program. According to Hong and Espelage, uh, experiences in one microsystem, for instance, pupil teacher uh, relation, can influence the interaction in another, for instance, for example, peer relation. So, does school climate have an impact on teachers' activities to reduce the rate of uh, school bullying? So, generally, we can say yes, it has an impact. Therefore, it is uh, really very important to take into account all the factors which uh, are related to the school climate. For example, physical appearance of a school, uh, faculty relations or teachers' re relations, pupils' interactions, leadership and decision-making, discipline and management environment, learning, instruction and assessment, attitude and culture. And as, a, as an example, I also would like to mention that uh, there are some differences in school attitude toward bullying, and uh, there are some uh, differences in attitude of uh, teachers' uh, uh, perception, how uh, they need to emphasize uh, and to put the efforts uh, in school. Uh, for example, in Norway, uh, teachers are more focused on personal development of their child, uh, while in Lithuania, uh, a lot of teachers were very occupied that uh, children would learn a lot, but actually this personal development goes after. And pupils attending a school in which behaviors such as bullying are acceptable by adults as are in a greater risk to become involved in such behaviors. An exosystem is an extension of the mesosystem and examines the community context in which interpersonal re relationships occur. In this case, school and neighborhoods um, and seeks to identify those settings that are associated with an increased risk for violent behavior. And of course, uh, there are also some differences between uh, Norwegian and Lithuanian schools. It is politically and financially decided to implement anti-bullying program in every Lithuanian school, while the assurance of the law of education, uh, paragraph 9a, is given to Norwegian schools or municipalities. And of course, if we 
uh, thinking about the cost effectiveness of anti-bullying programs, I think that we can relay, uh, relate to Beckman's and Svensson's uh, study. Uh, and they showed that uh, all this bullying prevention program is a cost effective use of resources uh, with cost per share exposed to bullying pupil equal to more than 40,000 euros. And the socio-economic situation and cultural peculiarities of Lithuania and Norway uh, could be an interesting factor in elaboration of the preconditions of teachers' activities within all various bullying prevention program from the uh, microsystem perspective. There are some soci uh, socio-economic inequalities between Lithuania and Norway can also occur. And for example, I would like to mention that in spite of the fact that population in Norway is almost twice as big as in Lithuania, the gross domestic product, which is one of the most important uh, indicators of the economic, varies a lot. Gross domestic product in Lithuania is approximately 2.5 times lower than in Norway. Moreover, it could be stated that Norway is one of the research countries in the world, uh, while Lithuania is assigned as uh, one of the poorest countries in the European Union. And there are some differences in the other factors as well. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there are 32.9% uh, uh, of Lithuanian citizens who had serious economic difficulties, uh, and uh, there are only 66 uh, uh, <coughs> percent of people in Norway who are struggling with the same program. But of course, Lithuania can be proud of uh, one thing, that for example, population aged 2024, 20, having completed at least upper secondary education, is higher in comparison with Norway. And in summarizing, adaptation of uh, Brofenbrenner's ecological system theory of human development to bullying allows to do a comparative analysis of the preconditions of all this bullying prevention program in schools and to understand that school bullying as well as prevention of school bullying should be evaluated from multiple levels. All levels of a model are interconnected and if there is an activity initiated in any level, the effects radiate into other levels. And moreover, this model gives an opportunity to see wider range of preventative means and provides a positive view to the solution of a bullying problem. So thank you for your attention. Okay, are there any questions? If you think of one, there's time in the end uh, as yeah. well. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Jiginta. <laughs>